So I want to briefly explain to you what this Shades of Green is about. Um, when Tommy was on the ballot back in 2010, a group of us were together, that group would be, we call ourselves the A-team. It's uh, Mario and Monica, who work with Tommy at the county, and then whoever his campaign assistants are at the time, and Tommy and myself. And we were in a meeting and we were trying to think of something new and exciting and different to do, and I was wanting to get more involved, and so we came up with this idea to have this women's luncheon. So this was back in 2009. And it was so fun, and it was so, yeah, it was just exciting, everyone had a great time, it was informative, and so as soon as it was over, we said, we need to do this again. Our theme that first year, because my favorite color is green, and because Tommy is very much into green everything, we, we decided to call it Shades of Green. Having done the first one, when we wanted to do another one, we're like, okay, now what? You know, we can't change the color, we kind of have a theme going on, and so we decided that what we were gonna do is go through Tommy's six transformational issues. If you have not heard Tommy's speech on his six transformational issues, I'm sure he would be happy to give it to you. But over and above what he's responsible for as a county commissioner, he has taken on six things that he thinks are extremely important to the community. Those things are, <laughs> this is always a test. And, and our first year was resource recovery and recycling. The second shades of green we had was health care. The third shades of green we had last year was jail population and reentry. This year, our theme is neighborhood revitalization. We have two left, and they are energy and transportation. And so now each year, Shades of Green just chooses another one of Tommy's six transformational issues. We invite some very special guests that know a lot about our particular topic, and they come and inform us on some ideas about that respective topic. So welcome to neighborhood revitalization. This is our 2012 topic. This is an important topic to Tommy, and it's kind of fun. Um, Tommy and I don't see each other a whole lot. <laughs> But when we're getting ready for a Shades of Green, we schedule some meetings and we talk about what topic is coming up. And neighborhood revitalization is one of those things that's really important to Tommy because he has never left the neighborhood that he was raised in. When Tommy was born at Santa Rosa Hospital and he went home, he went home to 140 Golden Crown. That was his primary residence. And you know where we live right now? 128 Golden Crown. Three houses down from where Tommy was raised. My experience was, was very different. When I uh, got taken home from Wilford Hall Hospital, where I was born, I went to my house at 230 Stolnet in Eastwood Village off of W.W. W. White Road. Anybody know where that is? Yay. Um, until I was 14 years old, then my family moved to a newer subdivision, Camelot, um, on, Golden, oh, on Round Table, out by Roosevelt High School. Then I went away to college, and when I came back, I moved to a newer neighborhood out off of Medical Drive because I was working at USAA, and I never went back. I never went back and saw Eastwood Village. I never went back and saw Camelot during all of that time. And then I married Tommy, and I moved back into Southeast San Antonio, and everything had changed tremendously. And I realized why he feels so strongly about neighborhood revitalization and making sure that you stay focused, that you have at least a, a small cadre of people that stay focused on keeping a neighborhood uplifted so that it can be a, a good, safe, beautiful place for you to live that you can have pride in. And so that's what brings us to our neighborhood revitalization Shades of Green. Today we have some excellent speakers for you and a really entertaining video of Tommy for you a little bit later. So without further ado, we're gonna get started. Our first, so our final speaker for the 2012 Shades of Green was our final speaker for the 2011 Shades of Green. Last year, you met her husband earlier, and that was Congressman Lloyd Doggett, and so now we're going to hear from his better half, Libby. Libby Doggett is director of the Pew Home Visiting Campaign at the Pew Center on the States. The campaign partners with state policymakers and other leaders to promote effective state policies and investments in quality home-based programs for new and expectant families. Libby served in the U.S. Department of Education as Executive Director of the Federal Interagency Coordinating Council for Infants, Toddlers, and Preschoolers with Disabilities and their families and worked for the National Head Start Association directing their Heads Up Reading Program. Libby holds a doctorate from the University of Texas in Early Childhood Special Education. I want to tell you that when Congressman Doggett's district was redrawn into part of Bear County, Tommy was very quick to say that having Congressman Doggett around was going to raise the bar for all elected officials in Bear County. And I'm here to tell you that having Libby Doggett around raises the bar for all spouses of elected officials in Bear County. Please welcome Libby Doggett. Thank you. I'm delighted to be back at Shades of Green. I was so excited about this event last year 
and was really just planning to come and really thought, am I going to get to speak again? But uh, I do want to speak because I felt like last year when I spoke about early childhood education and pre-K and how it was really important for city revitalization and for our future that someone from the mayor's office was listening. <laughs> when Lloyd's office, thank you, when Lloyd's office or Lloyd's um, congressional district got redrawn and we realized that in order for him to, to continue to represent Austin, where we have so many friends and such deep roots, that we were also going to have the opportunity to represent part of San Antonio. Uh, we were actually quite excited because we had a number of friends here, uh, and we love this city. But we have no better friends than Tommy and Karen Atkinson. They have come to be part of our family and have reached out to us in every single possible way and have really made this not just a, a fun journey but just you know part of part of coming home because we get to see them every time we come to, to San Antonio and as we're here. Uh, my, my message is going to be very very simple. I work at the Pew Charitable Trust and uh, I do children's work. I ran a campaign to get pre-K for three and four year olds all over this country because we very much believe that this is a part of revitalizing our country. And now we're working, and now I'm working on a campaign for pregnant teenage moms who are all of a sudden realize they're pregnant. They don't really know what to do and they're confronted with uh, raising a child. And what we have found is that if you provide that family, and hopefully it's not just the mom, but maybe a dad too, with the support, a mentor or a coach, that you will have incredible results. That mother gets her life together. Uh, she has a better pregnancy outcome. Uh, she gets off she quits smoking, uh, she gets to the doctor, the child is more likely to be born uh, at full birth weight, uh, and the mother's more likely to try breastfeeding. Uh, she or will go back to school, uh, go get a job. The, the mentor will connect that family with all the incredible services in the neighborhood. So my message today is in our neighborhood revitalization, don't forget the children. Because really, they are what make our neighborhoods very, very special. When you hear the sounds in the backyard and you hear, watch the children riding their bikes around, you think, this is a neighborhood where I would like to live. And so for children, every aspect of a neighborhood is important. And I want to start at the top. You know, you, you may think that what Lloyd does doesn't have anything to do with neighborhood revitalization, but it very much does because everything does. And at the federal government, a lot of the money that comes to our schools or the money for our promised neighborhoods to revitalize, uh, hopefully, a neighborhood here in San Antonio, that is federal money. So that is very important. We know that our businesses, and, and some of our speakers mentioned Accenture and Valero and, and the businesses, those businesses that not only are in the neighborhood, but also those that serve the neighborhood are important to us. And it does make a difference to a family, whether the, whether the uh, business is a bar or uh, a wonderful grocery store. So if we want to revitalize our neighborhoods, we have to be paying attention to what kinds of businesses are there for children and for families. Uh, the government structures, the parks, and the schools are so very important. I know when our two daughters, Lisa and Kathy, were young, we spent every afternoon at West End Field Park swimming. Uh, it was a park that, where the pool was actually free. Uh, they were able to attend their neighborhood schools and get to know the, the children in the neighborhood. So if you want to revitalize a neighborhood, you've got to have good parks. You've got to have really good schools and good child care centers and good preschools. Uh, infrastructure is very important. You know, who wants to live in a neighborhood where the sidewalks are all messed up or where the streets are, are, are not in good shape? And I've been excited to see some of the revitalization when you start putting in good sidewalks and good curbs and good bus stops where you can stay, you know, out of the, out of the sun when you're waiting for the bus and where you even make the, the crosswalks, you know, put the bricks in and it looks so much prettier and, and just kind of gives that that tar on the streets, a new look. So the infrastructure is important as well. Uh, I work for a nonprofit. 
uh, Pew is in Philadelphia, and I know that we have given back to that community. And I would urge you all to reach out to your nonprofits and to your foundations, because Pew used to be a foundation, and ask them to help in your neighborhood. Ask them to come and fill in some of those holes where, where you haven't been able to get the government or someone else to, to uh, do something. And then lastly, the most important part of a neighborhood are the people. And that's why it's so much fun to be here today, because you all are the people that are really making San Antonio such a great place to live. And the, the neighborhood, the, the leadership you're providing your neighborhood is so very incredible. Uh, as I was looking forward to the speech and talking to some people about it and getting some ideas, uh, I talked to Tom Hager, who is over in Cosimo's uh, neighborhood. He is at the Presbyterian Beacon, um, Pres Presbyterian Beacon Church. And I said, well, what do, what do the churches do? And then he told me the story about uh, their, their neighborhood where they didn't have a cross, cross guard for the school kids for about seven days and that the church was able to get together with, it, with the neighborhood association with the elected officials and make a few calls and within a couple of days of course they had a car guard or car, car, I don't know what they call them someone to help the children cross the streets and uh, so he said, you know, churches can not only be a great place for people to come, but they could be a catalyst for neighborhood revitalization. And then last story I want to tell you is about our friend Lester Bryant, who is over working at Sam Houston, Church, uh, Sam Houston School. And he is now starting a program for parent engagement because he feels like that school needs more parents engaged. And you have these people like in this room and like the two men I just mentioned who are really working and that's what it takes to make neighborhoods work. It's those people, it's those relationships we establish with each other so that we can make those phone calls because what we all want to do is make our neighborhoods great because the children are the most important thing that we're giving to our future. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Libby.